Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life in my crazy craft room. Guys, it's a hot mess in here. There is Christmas decor everywhere from all the videos I'm creating, but I'll get it cleaned up after the holidays. All right, today I am bringing you a highly, I'm gonna use the word highly, asked for video. I'm gonna take you through how I create something on my Cricut. Now, as a note of importance, I have a Cricut Air 2. I think I have a 2. Yeah, I have a Cricut Explore Air 2. So when we get to the printing process, a couple things will be different for you that have the joy in the maker. And for me, uh, one of the biggest is I don't have a drop down menu to determine what type of materials I'm cutting with. I have a a wheel on my machine, but I'll show you that. I think that's really the main difference. And I have coffee. It's chilly in here, but I'm trying not to get coffee anywhere important. So we're going to take one of these signs from the Dollar Tree. You can use any, any base. I'm just making a small sign to show you on here. So I took this. It's really neat. It comes with its own chalk. I think it's in the wedding section. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Um, so what I did is my favorite. I took one of these scratch markers, furniture repair markers in mahogany. And I just stained the wood because I like a darker feel to it. Um, I didn't do the whole back. I just did the legs. And then this is how it stands up like on a tripod. And I make sure the surface is really clean. First step is to measure our surface that we want to design on. So mine fully is five and a half inches wide by four and a half inches long. So we're gonna remember four and a half long by five and a half wide. And I will show you, oh, we have both cats today. They're so happy it's fall, I opened their window. All right, so we're going to get started. I'm going to do a screen record on my laptop and then there'll be some inserts. But for right now, let's go to the computer and set up our desktop. We're on our desktop. So this is what your Cricut desktop should look like. Now we're going to start our project. And as I mentioned, and I have my little project here, if you can hear it clanking around, the width is five and a half inches and the height is four and a half inches. So I'm gonna come in here to a shape. I'm gonna grab a square and I'm gonna make myself a little template so I know what to work within. I'm gonna unlock it here at the bottom. So the width is five and a half inches, tab over. The height is four and a half inches, hit tab again. This is, I'm gonna lock it now. So by locking it, when I move it in this direction, it does what I want it to do, which is stays in the exact proportions that I have it set for. So right now I know my project needs to fit in here. Now I don't wanna keep it this color, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna make it clear or white. And I'm gonna stick it in the corner. This is gonna help me with design placement. That is simply it. So this is the exact size of my template. Now we're going to create our sign. The first thing I wanna say, do is make my wording. So what words do I want? And I want my sign to say, I run, it's gonna say I run on coffee and Christmas. Now, I want my words to be um, separate because I'm gonna give them different fonts. So for now, I have I run, but I want to fix it. I want a capital R. Personal preference, guys, type your word. And that was Wellington, he's trying to tell me something. I'm gonna come up here to font, click on fonts. I go to system. If you click on these fonts, these are all the ones that Cricut offers, but I will tell you that I've gotten to a point where I created a project, I got to the point to make it, and then I had it wanted $4.50 for the font. So I just 
use this, the fonts that I have on my system. So I know that they're mine. So I think we're going to do I run in whatever that font is I just chose. And I'm going to make it a little smaller. And I also want to bring the words closer together. So if you look up here, letter spacing, if I go down, it brings them closer together, which is really what I want. All right. I don't like that space there either. So why don't we just do I, and I want the same font for run. So all I did is I closed out of, and I'm doing all these words separate so that I can space them exactly where I want. And I know I want my letter spacing closer. So I'm just going down to negative two. And this is all personal preference. So I have my I run. And then I, you can use measurements, but quite frankly, I just lay my letter over until they match. So we have them, we have them together. I run, and then I'll fix my spacing in a minute. Hi, buddy. And then I run on, I want to put this word here and you're going to see why I want different fonts and how, why I'm doing them separate is because I want different fonts and I want different um, spacing. So do I like that one? Come on. Yeah, I like that one. So I run on and then we're going to type Christmas. I definitely am going to do a different font for coffee and Christmas. And then I'm going to type coffee. And bring them over here just so I can see them. You can leave them over your box. It doesn't matter. But I just want to see them. And the font I think I want for coffee and Christmas because I want them to be the same. So I'm going to first off line these up. Are they the same size? Sure are. I have a font down here, is that it, that I loaded. And it's brush script. Yes, that's the one I want. Come over here, down to, and I can just type in here brush. And it will bring up brush script. See how that works? Oops. And then I need a ampersand. Because I could do and, but I want to do that. Now, we have all of our pieces together. What we need to do is get everything sized appropriately and get it onto our grid. So if I do just these two letters to get these two words, I can put up here what I want, where I want them. I definitely need this on much smaller. Oh, here. Let me bring that down here. I don't know why it does that to me sometimes, but I run on. And you just want to do this however you like it. coffee and but I definitely need them smaller and it's all I mean this is literally it you just have to let me move that for a second you just have to get your letters together and it's there's no magic formula to get it where you need it to go right but then once you get it in the position that you want it like size wise so I definitely want Christmas bigger. I want that here. We're going to put coffee here because I also need this to fit. Now these two, I still want to connect them together. So I like, I like that. Right? So what I'm going to do is grab them all. You just have to right click and highlight them all. 
come down here to the corner and I'm attaching them together. Now this is my measurement box that I have. I wanna make sure they're gonna fit in here. And if I wanna make them bigger, now I can proportionately make them bigger. So there we go. I run on coffee and Christmas. So this cut is done. I'm gonna move it over here for right now. I'm gonna add something to this and I'm gonna show you how I cut multiple colors on one mat. Now I already have this Christmas tree and this snowflake loaded, but you can go into the Cricut Design Space. They have free pictures you can use. Oh, these are large. So we're gonna shrink them down here real quick. Just tap, there we go. And then we just wanna click off and I want them to separate. Here we go. So I'm gonna make my mug bigger. And where do I want my mug? Like what size do I want it? That's what I wanna figure out right now. And I don't want this bumping right up against the side, for sure. Now it just becomes a design, how you want your, how you want it to look. So now that might be a little big, or if I move my coffee cup up here and I put that towards the bottom, now I have a good lineup, right? Like I like that sign. So I like the size of my coffee cup. We're gonna leave that alone. I want to cut out this snowflake on the middle of this coffee cup, just for design. So I'm going to come up here and turn it white so I can see it and center it. Now, if I leave it just like that, it will cut it. However, we're going to learn how to slice. So slicing is two layers only. One layer is my coffee cup. One layer is my snowflake right so i have two layers i need to flatten them together to make one layer so i can slice it so i highlight it actually it's going to let me slice it see the slice button down here you hit slice now i need to move my coffee cup out oh i lost it where'd he go there he is get this out of here move him over here there's my coffee cup And now I have snowflakes. If I just want to cut these out, I certainly can in whatever color I want if I want to add them to my little sign. We can just cut them out in whatever color we'd like. I'm not going to do that, though. So this is the basics of my sign. I run on coffee and Christmas, and I have a coffee cup here. Now I'm going to use other decor pieces, but let's pull out a green piece if I can find one we'll go in here and we're gonna look for a piece of holly so I just type holly and go and this is free and this I upload it this is free or no these are 99 cents you see the price at the bottom so I can just take this free one I'm gonna probably maybe see if I can get those berries out but let's see so I imp I brought it in bring it over here I don't I don't feel like I can just get rid of these berries so I'm gonna go back to image and I'm gonna take this holly berry I uploaded this a while ago into my design space so it's mine but I'm gonna add it to my canvas and probably go with this size right here so if you go up top you can hit duplicate duplicate right so now i have three hollies leaves but watch this circle i can turn them any direction i want i can connect them together like this, because I want them to print off as one, right? So I'm gonna go this way. Now, right now they're all separated, but watch. Highlight them all and attach them. Now they're one piece and they're one cut. Cool, huh? 
Then I can put them over here and say, well, that might be a little big. Let's shrink them down. Shrink them like that. And I want two of them. So I'm going to duplicate. The reason I attach everything you, will become abundantly clear here in a moment. Now, do I need, I need some red little berries. So we're going to go with a shape. I'm going to get a circle. I'm going to see how big I want the circle in proportion to that. Because I'm going to attach them. So I'm just going to make myself six of them. So one, two, three, four, five. Six. Now, if I just went to make it, I'm going to get rid of, oops, I'm going to get rid of this right now. So this is attached together, right? This is attached. These are attached. If I go to make it without attaching these little dots, if you can see the next screen, they're going to be all over the place, potentially. So it's going to come over here and look, it's got me cutting on three separate boards. Now it is putting them all in a row, which is fine for what we need to do. But I'm going to see if I can get them all on one. So we're going to take these three. We're going to attach them. So they're all one cut. Right? Right? We have this one here, it's attached. Now I'm gonna weld it together. I'm gonna take these two and weld them as well. Oops, well, no I'm not. Yes I am. Weld them. And weld them is like a permanent attachment. Here we go, and that's one cut. So now we have all the pieces. Oops, I want to unweld that. Well, it's fine. Now we're going to go make it. So everybody's attached and where it needs to be. So on this cut, it's going to put the holly and the mug on one mat. So we'll do that cut first. Then it's gonna do the I run on coffee on a cut and this on a cut. And there should be a way if I go back to assign these all to one, one mat. But if not, we'll do multiple cuts, it's fine. Yeah. So this is it on the computer. I'm just gonna hit continue, and then I'm gonna bring you up and show you how I how we cut it on, on our actual Cricut. So that was it for the computer portion. As soon as I hit continue, it's gonna give you options. You need to select, if it's a newer Cricut, you need to select. If not, you'll do the dial on here, which I will show you. But once you hit continue, it's going to see it's attaching to my cutter, which isn't turned on. Oh, yes, it is. It turned itself off. So my cutter's on now, so it's going to find my cutter. And since we're cutting vinyl, we don't need to mirror anything or any of that. All we need to do... So it's saying set base material. On mine, it says adjust dial to desired material. Yours will have a drop down menu if you have a newer, like a Joy or a Cricut 3 or um, a newer Cricut. Now, everything for me takes place on my machine. So let's transfer over to that. All right. So on my Cricut, I have a dial here and I have it set to vinyl. And I know on mat one, it's cutting out my Christmas mug or my coffee mug on this corner. And the holly berries are getting cut out 
on this side. This might be a bit of a bigger piece than I need, but that's okay. And if I had more cutting ability, like if it was telling me I had four cuts to make, I could put more colors down here. So I'm doing two cuts on this one, right? The second, so we're gonna feed it in. On mine, I have to hit the feed button. I know on the Joy, it automatically feeds. And then I'm gonna hit my Go. And my computer is preparing it. On the, the newer models, I believe it just, it just goes automatically. So we're going to, it's gonna cut for me. And these are going to be the holly leaves. And then it's going to go over and cut my mug. So once I get everything cut out, I'll be back and I'll show you how we lead it. Okie dokie. So we have our four colors that we're working with and everything has been cut. So what I'm going to do is this is called weeding. And this is your weeding tool. I would recommend getting the tool packet for the Cricut if you haven't already. Um, they're great and they work out well in your projects. So you're taking away what you don't want on your picture. So I don't want that coffee in the cup because I maybe I'll go back with some glitter or something. I don't know what is on my hook. Um, and it does require some good lighting, not going to lie. And this stuff literally sticks everywhere. Just be aware. Okay, this is going to be a little tricky to get out, but let's see. Um, I will tell you when you're doing a more intricate design like this snowflake, you really want to use a good quality vinyl. So like a Cricut or um, there's a couple other brands that I'm not thinking of offhand. But you really want a good quality. This is my second cut. I grabbed a cheaper gold that I had and it just tore it up on this snowflake and I really wanted the snowflake to shine through. Now, if I wanted this snowflake a different color, I could stick this on, cut around it or whatever, but I'm gonna let it be black because that's what color is gonna come through. Now the white is the words and if you see, it's hard to see. You kinda gotta get a good angle, which is why typically I always start on the outside and bring it in. This way I can watch my words and make sure everything is lifting where it should and I'm not picking up any words like here. The coffee was lifting. So if that happens, I go back and I just give it a good wipe down with my finger. So you're just watching and here my C went it happens guys you just want to be vigilant and don't get upset if you have to do a cut more than one time I mean please I can't tell you how much vinyl I go through um, I will say there is it's Oracle 365 is permanent vinyl if you do a lot of vinyl cutting it's much more reasonable online I think it's like 65 cents a sheet plus shipping now, I also know that Hobby Lobby sells Paper Source, which is their brand, which is not bad at all, for like $1.99 a sheet, and I feel like it's on sale rather frequently. Now, this is the weeding step that I was referring to. It's taking out everything you don't want. So it's taking out your negative space. You know, I, I wanna make sure that all of my openings are removed and not stuck to my page. Some of them are just tiny. Like the inside of these E's is pretty small. That one ended up going under. But you just wanna be gentle, but firm at the same time. You gotta get it out of there, or you won't be able to tell that that's an E. Same thing with my O and my coffee. 
There we go. My lighting is not great today. It's kind of overcast out here. So I'm just trying to... And you know what? Don't be afraid to get a better lamp close to you. Get your magnifiers out if that's what you need. You just want to make sure you're picking out all the pieces. And obviously, basic shapes are going to, are going to be easier than letters and words. You know, stars, triangles, squares. But if you want a cute sign and you want, you know, you bought this machine because you want to use it. And that is how I feel about it. Oh, C-H-R-I. And sometimes you won't see what is stuck. Here we go. Got to get my head around that. Hey, my dotted eye stuck around. I always lose the dots on my eye. And then I... And there are so many other DIYers out there that have a lot of tutorials, but I was asked to make this by a few of you, and so here we go. Okay. I'm getting the little pieces of sticker off my hands. Also, what is helpful is you get a piece of painter's tape and like turn it backwards, you can put your little bits on. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but it says I run on coffee and Christmas. Christmas. All right, got that one done. This one here will be super easy. It's just my uh, my little dots at an angle. This is the Dollar Tree vinyl, and I'm surprised because the glitter vinyl I hated. It cut terribly. But the, the solid colors, again, I'm just doing a basic shape. I don't know that it would cut something like a snowflake, but it did fine. Cut good, no problem. So I don't hate it. I don't love it. How about that? All right. Now I definitely need to get over here because I know. There we go. And um, another tool that I definitely use, and I bought it on like Etsy, or not Etsy, on um wish or something are dental tools they're a little sharper and finer but we got everybody out so we're ready and i'm even going to use my cricut transfer tape usually i use dollar tree but i figured let's get the good stuff out for this project um remembering you can keep you can reuse this a couple times you know multiple times really just depends but uh so you just want to get the back off and I'm just going to stick it on there like that. And you want to give it a good rub. If you're feeling resistance in one direction or the, like I don't go hard towards me because I feel like it will cut, but it's on here now. And you just fold it like this. And you'll learn what transfer tapes you can use for what projects. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that the Cricut transfer tape is better than the Dollar Tree stuff. But when I'm doing a lot of repetitive stuff, the Dollar Tree is much more, oh, sorry, is more cost effective. All right. So it's the first placement and we know where we want this, right? We're going to put it right here. Rub it down, use your little tool, and then I, the general practice is that you go at an angle to the letters or the design to help, um, so it doesn't pull the words up. You go slowly and you watch. If something were to come back up, you send it back down and you rub it. Takes, I believe the Oracle 365 takes 24 to 48 hours to cure. So if this was wrong, I could still go in here and pluck this off. But the longer it sits, the longer it's going to stick or harder it's going to stick. All right. I want to put my coffee mug in next because that's my second focal point. And I'm probably going to cut this tape down now because you do not want it to be overly large on your project, especially when it's going to start sticking to other pieces. 
and then I'll just keep that piece of transfer tape and use it the next time I do a project. All right, I stuck it on, turn it over. I like to, to do it from the back. Some people like to do it from the front. It doesn't matter. Whatever makes you happy. Turn it over. I will tell you this is easier to pull the back away than the front. Got it in there. Yes, you can use your lineups. These even have a grid on it for you, but I'm just looking to see. Like, do I want my cup a little cockeyed? I do. Just give it a little. Give it a little character. And again, we're going to go sideways and pull it up. Oh, see how that's stuck? It's okay. We're just going to pull it down. And now what I might do is go around this way and very carefully get this lifted up. Off. The snowflake is just delicate is all. But it's okay. There we go. Oh, I love it, guys. What do you think? I might have to fill that with a little glitter. We'll see. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to layer. So I definitely have two pieces of holly here, right? So what I'm going to do just with my finger, and you can use anything. You don't have to use transfer tape. You could use a pair of tweezers if it's just one piece, but oops. Okay, well, this is a good idea to show you what happens when you're not being careful. But I just get it back down there. There. You'll never notice that I ripped it. And maybe we'll put one over here. The one thing is the transfer tape is always going to stick pretty good. To that I mean let's be honest it's a circle I can pick it up with my finger there you go just giving you different ways that you can do this you can also use your little hook um, I will say this Dollar Tree vinyl is see-through um, the Cricut is definitely more opaque just keep that in mind it doesn't matter to me on this project, but if you're drawing something because you wanna sell it, you definitely wanna be conscious that I can see the green. I hope you can see that through the red berries. But, I'm just gonna do that. And you can put as many layers, as many colors as you want. Just be cognizant of how thick it gets. There we go. And I think I wanna put him up in this corner. What do you guys think? Right there. Just don't be afraid of it. That's the big deal. That's the big thing. If I had a lesson to show you today, just try. Don't be afraid. It's not going to be the end of the world if something messes up. And quite frankly, rip all the vinyl off and start over. I mean, that's the beauty of crafting. Remember that. It doesn't have to be perfect. I tell myself that all the time. Now, since I'm just working with my last piece, I'll trim it down. and pull that off and then I want to do this little piece down here right and you can use your finger you can use that your finger works just as good sometimes all right guys yeah I will say the Dollar Tree vinyl it's okay it's not I'm not mad at it but it definitely doesn't stick great on surfaces. So keep that in mind, but, and that's it. That's our sign. I run on coffee and Christmas, which is really a true statement if we're asking us, but, and that's what my cup looks like. If I want to put a little, um, I might put a little glitter in here just to give it a little zhuzh you can put some border like the pom-poms that the dollar tree had around it and you have a beautiful little christmas sign that you made on yourself on yourself by yourself 
and there it is. I hope this was a tutorial that was helpful to you. Um, please do like, subscribe, share with your friends if you also got a, if they also got a cricket for themselves, and we can uh, make some fun things. Tomorrow I will have a DIY video out of a whole bunch of cricket. Christmas and Thanksgiving decor that I created, but I wanted to get this video up first. So thank you and have a good one. Bye.